Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Harvest Thanksgiving service from Dundrum Methodist Church this morning. A very warm welcome to all of you who have joined us here on Zoom and those who will be joining us later um, on our recording on YouTube. This morning, despite our restrictions, we will be celebrating the harvest that provides us with our daily bread. I'm so grateful to Claire who has made this beautiful display here for us this morning. We were reflecting earlier on how last year and in previous years a whole army of people descends on the church to decorate the whole place and it looks so wonderful but because of our restrictions this year um, Claire has been able to, to put together this beautiful uh, arrangement around our communion table this morning and Claire we're so grateful to you for that. I'm also joined today by Gavin who's going to be leading us in our worship and by Vonda who will be bringing our children's story later on this morning and we will be speaking also about the work of the Methodist World Development and Relief Committee. But as we come to worship uh, let us pray together. God of justice and mercy we come before you now with an awareness of those whose prayers today are sighs and sobs and even screams for help. Soften our hearts to care more keenly, sharpen our minds to think more clearly, and clench our fists to fight more fiercely for those who are oppressed. Amen. Now I welcome Gavin, who's going to come and, and sing a, a very well-known song. It's not one of our traditional harvest songs, but it's one that reminds us that morning is broken as it does every day. Thank you, Gavin. And let us pray together. Father, as we celebrate this season of thanksgiving, we give thanks for the blessings of food, of provision and nourishment. Please grow in us a harvest for the world. Come seed a, sow, a, sow a seed of hope within our souls, that we might yield goodness, patience and kindness, in abundance. Sow a seed of peace in our lives, Lord, that we may bear the fruit of forgiveness, compassion, and righteousness. 
Come sow a seed of love in our hearts, Lord, that others would reap the blessings of family, friendship, and community. May each seed of hope, peace, and love grow within us into a harvest that can be feasted on by all. And Father, let our hearts never grow tired of giving you thanks for the beauty and the wonder of the world you have made around us. For the variety of its life and its landscape. Thank you, Lord, for so many things that you bless us with each and every day. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. That was a prayer um, by, uh, by Julie Palmer, uh, written especially for Harvest. And we're going to hear now uh, a story from Wanda. She addresses the children and indeed all of us this morning. Good morning, everybody. I wanted to talk to you this morning about seeds. Usually when we buy a packet of seeds, it has a picture or a photograph on the outside of the packet that tells us what will grow if we plant these seeds. So this morning, I'd like you to see if you can guess what will grow from the seeds that I show you. See if you can guess with somebody at home. If I were to plant these seeds, what do you think will grow? If you guessed a sunflower, you are right. Those are sunflower seeds. What will grow if I plant these? There's lots of these to be found about at this time of the year. If you guessed a horse chestnut tree, you'd be right. Try this one. What will grow if I plant these seeds? Anybody guess carrots? These are carrot seeds. What about this one? If I were to plant this, did you know that this was a seed? What do you think grows if we plant one of these? A pine tree. This grows into a big pine tree. I found these seeds in my cupboard this morning and I got really excited because I think if I plant these seeds, I might be able to grow a donut tree. I think I've found donut seeds in my cupboard. So I'll keep you posted and let you know what happens when I plant these seeds. There are lots of Bible stories and verses that talk about planting or sowing or reaping or harvesting and sometimes the things that they're talking about are not things that we can hold in our hands just like we could hold a handful of sunflower seeds or carrot seeds or we could pick up a pine cone the things that the bible sometimes talks about are not things we can hold in our hand sometimes they're things like love and kindness and patience and goodness and they're things that we can't really hold, but we can feel and we can see them around us. And so we're going to have a look and see what our Bible verse for today is. It's from the book of Hosea, chapter 10, verse 12. I said, plant goodness, harvest the fruit of loyalty, plow the new ground of knowledge. Look for the Lord until he comes and pours goodness on you like water. I want to share a story with you this morning. It's one of my favourites. It's written by Jacqueline Woodson 
and illustrated by E.B. Lewis, and it's called Each Kindness. As I read this story this morning, I'd like you to see if you can find any of the places where somebody in the story could have planted kindness or goodness or love and waited to see what would happen. Each kindness. That winter, snow fell on everything, turning the world a brilliant white. One morning, as we settled into our seats, the classroom door opened and the principal came in. She had a girl with her and she said to us, this is Maya. Maya looked down at the floor. I think I heard her whisper, hello. We all stared at her. Her coat was open and the clothes beneath it looked old and ragged. Her shoes were spring shoes, not meant for the snow. A strap on one of them had broken. Our teacher, Miss Albert said, say good morning to our new student. But most of us were silent. The only empty seat was next to me. That's where our teacher put Maya. And on that first day, Maya turned to me and smiled. But I didn't smile back. I moved my chair, myself and my books a little further away from her. When she looked my way, I turned to the window and stared out at the snow. And every day after that, when Maya came into the classroom, I looked away and didn't smile back. My best friends that year were Kendra and Sophie. At lunchtime, we walked around the schoolyard, our fingers laced together, whispering secrets into each other's ears. One day, while we were near the slide, Maya came over to us. She held open her hand to us to show us the shiny jacks and tiny red ball she'd gotten for her birthday. It's a high bouncer, she said, but none of us wanted to play. So Maya played a game against herself. That afternoon, when we got back into the classroom, Maya whispered to me, Bet you can't guess who the new Jacks champion of the world is. Behind me, Andrew whispered, Chloe's got a new friend. Chloe's got a new friend. She's not my friend, I whispered back. The weeks passed. Every day, we whispered about Maya, laughing at her clothes, her shoes, the strange food she brought for lunch. Some days, Maya held out her hand to show us what she had brought to school. A deck of cards, pick-up sticks, a small tattered doll. Whenever she asked us to play, we said no. The days grew warmer and warmer. The pond thawed. Grass began growing where snow had once been. One day, Maya came to school wearing a pretty dress and fancy shoes, but the shoes and the dress looked like they'd belonged to another girl before Maya. I have a new name for her, Kendra whispered. Never knew. Everything she has comes from a second-hand store. We all laughed. Maya stood by the fence. She was holding a jump rope, but did not come over to us to ask if we wanted to play. After a while, she folded it double, rolled the ends around each hand and started jumping. She jumped around the whole schoolyard without stopping. She didn't look up once, just jumped, jumped, jumped. The next day, Maya's seat was empty. In class that morning, we were talking about kindness. Miss Albert had brought a big bowl into class and filled it with water. 
we all gathered around her desk and watched her drop a small stone into it. Tiny waves rippled out, away from the stone. This is what kindness does, Miss Albert said. Each little thing we do goes out like a ripple into the world. Then, Miss Albert let us each drop the stone in as we told her what kind things we had done. Joseph had held the door for his grandmother. Kendra helped change her baby's brother's diaper. Even mean old Andrew had done something. I carried teacher's books up the stairs, he said, and Miss Albert said it was true. I stood there, holding Miss Albert's rock in my hand, silent. Even small things count, Miss Albert said gently, but I couldn't think of anything, and I passed the stone on. Maya didn't come to school the next day, or the day after that, but each morning I walked to school slowly, hoping this would be the day Maya returned, and she'd look at me and smile. I promised myself this would be the day that I smiled back. Each kindness, Miss Albert had said, makes the whole world a little bit better. But Maya's seat remained empty. And one day, Miss Albert announced to the class that Maya wouldn't be coming back. Her family had to move away, Miss Albert said. Then she told us to take out our notebooks. It was time for spelling. That afternoon, I walked home alone. When I reached the pond, my throat filled with all the things I wished I would have said to Maya. Each kindness I had never shown. I threw small stones into it over and over and over, watching the way the water rippled out and away, out and away, like each kindness done and not done, like every girl somewhere holding a small gift out to someone, and that someone turning away from it. I watched the water ripple as the sun set through the maples and the chance of a kindness with Maya became more and more forever gone. The end. Hosea 10 verse 12 says, Sow righteousness, reap love. It's time to till the ready earth. It's time to dig in with God until he arrives with righteousness ripe for the harvest. This story had lots of opportunities for the children to plant kindness, to plant love to say something kind, to do something nice, to show somebody that they mattered, that they were seen and that they were loved. And they didn't do it, did they? I wonder if you've ever felt like Chloe did at the end of this story, where she wished she had done something. I wonder how different this story would have been if Chloe and the other children had done what this Bible verse says if they had sown righteousness, if they had been kind, if they had done something a little bit differently. The verse says, to plant goodness, harvest the fruit of loyalty, plow the new ground of knowledge, look for the Lord until he comes and pours goodness on you like water. Seeds are really special because they're really, really tiny, most of them, and they grow into huge things, even if they are fairly big seeds like those pine cones. If we let them, and if we, if we dare to put them in the ground and wait to see what happens. And so I want to encourage you this week to do just that, 
to look for ways that you can be kind, ways that you can plant things like goodness and love in your house, in your school. Um, find the little things that you can do each day and then watch and see, see what God turns them into. Let's pray together, hands together, eyes closed. Heavenly Father, be with us in school and at home this week. Help us to plant goodness, to sow seeds of kindness and love. We want to dig in with you. Show us where and how to do this. Work on our hearts, Lord, breaking up any hard ground so that you can plant new things there. We want to be good soil. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. Father, thank you so much for, for uh, making that, that verse so real uh, and so personal to us uh, this morning. And today we have two readings. One is from the prophet Hosea, and one is from the Gospel of John. <clears throat> Hosea chapter 10, verses 12 to 13. Sow righteousness for yourselves. Reap the fruit of unfailing love. Break up your unplowed ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes and shower his righteousness on you. But you have planted wickedness. You have reaped evil. You have eaten the fruit of deception. And then from John's Gospel, uh, just a, a small portion of a, a very well-known um, portion of scripture where Jesus describes himself as the Good Shepherd. John chapter 10, verses 7 to 11. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and they will go out and they will find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And so, um, um, RTE last uh, last Friday, I was uh, I just happened at the corner of my eye, I caught a glimpse of uh, a, a piece that was that was playing, um, and they featured the zero waste community garden from Rath Coffee, and it was only the next day really as I remembered this, uh, and I thought this ties in beautifully with what I want to share this morning. A retired man saw this derelict piece of, of ground close to his house and uh, he had time on his hands, he was wondering what to do and this piece of derelict ground uh, troubled him and he went to the council to see would it be okay for him to try to cultivate them. They said he could. And so he gathered a group of people together and they started to go in and to, to clear out all the rubbish, to, to build a shed, to pull up the weeds and to plant some crops. The community and the, the local businesses, they got behind him and they supported him and encouraged him in this project. And the amazing thing is that not only did it transform that piece of ground in Rath Coffee, it actually began to transform the whole of the community as they came together and worked together in this project. It's a story that beautifully illustrates our readings today from Hosea the prophet. Hosea was a prophet who lived in a time of great wealth and prosperity and, and also a kind of a false sense of security in the kingdom of Israel. Um, and uh, even though it was prosperous, the prosperity had come at a price because it brought with it um, greed and, and corruption and oppression of the poor and a very superficial worship that, that wasn't really uh, grounded in, in a relationship with God. It was just ritual, and it was actually offensive to God. The last couple of weeks, we've been looking at the prophet Amos and his message. 
Uh, and for years he had warned the people of God to seek justice and righteousness because without it, their worship was meaningless and disaster was sure to follow. Hosea is speaking about 10 years later and he comes with a final warning, a final message, a final appeal to the people of God to put things right. And he tells them to sow righteousness so that they will reap unfailing love. And he uses this beautiful phrase, break up the unplowed land. Or in another translation, it says, plow the fallow ground. And in the message, which you'll hear a little bit later on, it says, dig in with God. A wonderful phrase, which we'll come back to. In the zero waste garden, the unplowed land had to be cleared of the rubbish and the weeds before they could begin to break up the soil and begin to sow crops that would grow and flourish. Hosea uses this farming analogy to challenge the people and his voice still speaks to us today. In our hearts and in our society, greed have and, and, and corruption have been allowed to grow. A lack of compassion and an exploitation of the poor has littered our thoughts and, and our politics. And Hosea says to the people of God, and, and the challenge is very real to us today, he says, you have planted wickedness, you have reaped evil, you have eaten the fruit of deception. And when we see the, the incredible inequality and poverty in our world today, when we witness corruption and exploitation, seemingly endless conflict, we see that his words are as relevant to us as they were when they were first spoken. But it need not be like this. And this is where the prophets continually call the people of God to come back to him, to, to live according to the covenant relationship that we have been called to, to put things right, to care for the, the, the oppressed, the poor and the needy. And as we celebrate harvest today, and we celebrate the wonder of God's provision for us, for, for our food, uh, for our shelter, for clothing, for all of humanity. It challenges us to look beyond ourselves to those who really struggle to find food or housing or justice. It's not because there isn't enough to go around. It's because it is not being evenly distributed. And people are being left behind. As Christians and as the people of God, we are called to live with righteousness, which is about the quality of our relationships and justice, which is the quality of our actions. The choices we make every day are, are really important in this regard. Do we eat food that is sustainable? Do we avoid unnecessary waste? Do we buy from companies that give a living wage to their workers? Do we actively seek to support the, support the poor and the disenfranchised through, through our prayers, through our social action, through lobbying politicians, through giving, through supporting organizations that are working on the front line? In the gospel reading today from John, Jesus talks to us about others who came before him and who promised great things but, but didn't deliver. Jesus calls them thieves and robbers and, and, and he says only he can offer life in all its fullness. Life in abundance. This is the promise and many Bible scholars have focused on this, this fullness that Jesus speaks of um, thinking it's, it simply refers to uh, it simply refers to our spiritual well-being. But this would be an incomplete understanding of that scripture. Because surely as Jesus speaks about the fullness of life, he is not only referring to our spiritual relationship with God, but also our physical and emotional and economic and social aspects 
of our lives as well. How can we say that life is abundant if there isn't enough food to eat? How can we say that we have a full life if we have no shelter over our heads? And the life in all its fullness that God intended for us all is a life where we walk closely and humbly with him, but also one where we do not grow hungry, where we have adequate water, shelter, where we feel safe in our families, and when we can be sure that we will receive justice. And this is why the Methodist Church established the World Development and Relief Committee some 50 years ago. The tagline on their website says, we are Christians committed to tackling poverty and injustice. So that's why we are supporting them today, and indeed every year we support them through our 1% appeal. And uh, frequently in our harvest service, we, we support them very directly. So we are supporting the World Development and Relief Committee as they seek to break up unplowed land in different parts of the world, and as they fight for justice and righteousness in many nations of the world. So when you support WDR, you're not just freeing people from difficult circumstances, you're actually freeing them to do new things and to be who they are meant to be before God. And we become co-workers with Jesus in seeking to provide an abundant life. The life is from Jesus. But we have the capacity to help or hinder that process. And that's a big responsibility. Today, WDR supports 13 different partners around the world. And we are impacting over 400,000 people in those communities, which is no mean thing. And so I would really encourage you, um, when, when this meeting is over or later during the week, I would really encourage you to, to go onto their website. And if you look in the chat, uh, there should be a link there. It will tell you where you can find that uh, connection um, to get to the World Development and Relief website. You just Google it and you'll see where to find it. It will give you details of each of those 13 projects. And also it will show you how you can uh, contribute uh, to, those, uh, to those projects. Um, you'll also be receiving over the next couple of days by email, if you're on our email list, uh, some more details about these projects and very specifically how you are able to, to give uh, to support the work. Let us just show you uh, a few slides very quickly. And then we're going to go back to our children's story and, and Vonda will, uh, will bring her take on this particular scripture, this particular challenge to us um, today. And so in these slides, uh, first of all, we, we see the, uh, um, we see a, a picture of, of a woman called Nandini at the sewing machine. She was a young woman who once lived in bonded labor in India. Um, it was a kind of modern slavery, and um, she, was, she was owned by a wealthy owner, and she worked long hours for very little return. But WDR um, partnered with the International Justice Mission to, to set her free, to, to buy her freedom and to enable her to now work for herself, to earn a wage for her family, and to gather with other women to do the same thing. Hundreds of women, like Nandini and their families, are being rescued and are discovering a new life uh, through this agency. The next slide um, is, uh, is a slide that shows, um, I, I think, um, Oh, these are some more of the, of, uh, of the, the women in that, uh, in that project. The next slide is a picture of uh, uh, Tokozani Ozwa. 
This is a very special woman. She was the director of Pakamisa um, at the beginning of this year, but sadly she died um, early in the COVID pandemic. She, she became sick with COVID and she passed away. Uh, as a single mom, she raised three children and her compassion drove her relentlessly to, to make life better for those in her community. Uh, the World Development and Relief Committee has lost a really great friend and a kindred spirit. And uh, the, the work at Pakamisa, of course, has been, has been um, deeply affected by her death. But the work at Pakamisa goes on as they seek, uh, as they seek to, uh, to look after orphaned children, to give preschool education to children, to help, help those affected by HIV and AIDS and they are linked to uh, Pine Valley Methodist Church in South Africa. And our next slide simply shows a little bit uh, about um, playing our part and, and what, uh, what World Relief and Development is able to do around the world. 13 partners in eight countries. Uh, last year, investing um, 290,000 euros for long-term development. 400,000 people have been touched by this project, by this ministry. And 93% of everything that is received goes directly to support these projects. The other 7%, of course, being administrative costs. And um, we've also been able to distribute uh, 10,000 euros towards emergency responses uh, when uh, things like earthquakes or or cyclones hit different parts of the world. So please do um, look at the different ways that you can give, perhaps by standing order or by a one-off um, gift. You can go onto their website and simply click on the donate button. But please, please do take this opportunity to look closer at the work of this uh, wonderful ministry as they seek to, to plow the foul ground in different parts of the world. We're going to, we're drawing to a close now. Gavin is going to come and he's going to sing a, a song, which is a, is a very new song. And it just reflects on the magnificent beauty of, of the world that God has made and how it inspires us to praise God and to give thanks. Yeah. 
You're the one who never leaves the one behind. Let us uh, close our meeting this morning with a prayer. Let us pray. May God bless us with discomfort at easy answers and half-truths and superficial relationships so that we may live deep hearts, deep within our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice and oppression an exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, from rejection or hunger, from war or conflict, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and turn their pain to joy. And may God bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world so that we can do what others claim cannot be done to bring justice and kindness to all our children 
and the poor. So Father, as we go our separate ways this morning, we thank you for this precious time we've been able to spend together to reflect together on your word, on your challenge to us today. Father, we pray that we would never grow tired at wondering at the beauty of nature, that our hearts would always be thankful and full of gratitude for what you have done for us. But may we never lose sight of the huge need in our world and of our privilege to be able to help and to reach out in love. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. Amen. Our time of worship is over, so if you want to remain on, on the line and uh, if you want to continue to chat a little bit, you can uh, feel free to do that. I should have said, um, but it's, uh, it's never too late, if you look at the, if you haven't already, if you open the chat screen on, uh, on your screen, you'll be able to see the words of the songs that we used today. And uh, the words of that last song in particular, um, I, I think you'll find very, very challenging. Thank you and God bless you all.